Hi, it's Jeff with Marine Beam, and today we're going to take a look at how to make a long range flashlight. In fact, we're going to show you how to use the light recycling technology to make the longest range flashlight yet, and we'll show you how it beats any other kind of flashlight, no matter what the technology or the amount of lumens. So, the first thing to do is understand the two ways to make a flashlight. Um, if we want to make a long range beam, the first thing you have is a, a powerful LED. Those are rated in lumens. That's the total amount of energy, similar to a watt. It's basically the watts that your eye can see. It's the total amount of energy that that chip makes. Obviously, the more lumens, the brighter the output of the light. But you have to get all those lumens downrange, and most flashlight designs are very inefficient at doing that. Probably the best way to um, look at that is to first imagine that any flashlight has an aperture. So if we imagine that this is the aperture, only the light that is at the entrance angle of that hole, in other words, only the light that be can collected by that hole will pass through that hole. Let's just try it a little different way here. We'll go ahead and turn on the, the lamp we have here, and we'll go ahead and put this in front, put this in front of the beam here. And if we go to the side here, you can see that entrance angle. You can see that sort of hot spot. Well, only that light is getting through. The light that we can see there is getting through the hole. All the rest of the light here on the other side is going and being radiated in all directions, so it's not making it through that hole. So imagine that the light beams are going out here at the angle of, of this little stick here, and none of those are get, making it through the hole. Only the light that has the correct entrance angle to that hole will get through. So you can see that that's analogous to the end of the flashlight or the lens. So two things, we know that we can get more light through the hole by doing one of two things. One, we can move the hole closer to the light and we would get much more light through it. Or we could have a much bigger hole and we'd get more of that available light or more of those lumens would go through that hole. Now I'll show you the, the first method most people use to make a long range light, which is a parabolic reflector. And what happens is that reflector sits right on top of the LED like that. And what you'll see down range, and I don't know, if I'll show you. You can see a center hot spot, but then you see that halo around it. And that's because you essentially have two beams here. You have the radiated light. That's the light that goes and never hits the reflector. It's diverging, meaning the further you go, the farther away it's getting, the less lumen density it has. So those lumens are going out in an angle, so it's not very efficient for going long range because this radiated light, that light that leaves the LED chip but never hits the reflector, that first beam we'll call it, is that wide halo beam of low density light. The second beam that comes out of this light is the light that's reflected that's high angle light. So in other words, if the light leaves the chip at a steep enough angle, it's going to hit the end of this reflector and it's going to be collimated, meaning it's going to try to make it parallel light coming out. So those are the two beams that you see, and I'm going to go ahead and use a flashlight here to show you. It's a little hard to see with the, um, with the camera, but you can see there's distinctly multiple halos or concentric rings there. The center hot spot is the reflected light. That's the light that goes down range, but all that extra light on the sides is wasted and it's diverging, I meaning it's getting further and further apart. Those photons are less and less dense as they go further and further down range. So that's the typical way you make a flashlight. But there's another way, and you've probably seen that, and that's to use a condensing lens or a collimating lens. And we'll show you that here. That's what I have here. And so we have the chip here, and as I I'm going to show you this as I focus it, and as I move it into its focal point, you're going to get actually an image of the chip projected. And boy, that should go a long way, shouldn't it? Well, of course it does. The problem is we still have two beams, the beam that's making it through that lens and the other beam that's 100% wasted. And we can see that here. If we can imagine a flashlight like the one we have here and imagine that this whole housing was clear, that's what you'd be looking at here. You'd have the lens out in front at its focal distance from this point here, and all the light that's passing through that focal point of this lens will be collimated coming out, meaning it's going to be parallel or perfectly straight coming out. But you can see here 
that most of the light doesn't make it to that lens because most of the light is radiating out at its natural diverging angle here and it's missing this lens entirely. So only the light that's making it through that lens is getting collimated. The same is true if we imagine our hole again. The light that you see through the paper that's causing the silhouette of the fixture here is not, of course, getting through that hole, nor is it getting through that lens, so it's wasted. So you can see most high and high output flashlight designs, while they may have a lot of lumens, meaning they're creating a lot of energy here, photometric energy, it's not making it down to its target, which is what you're trying to do. So let's talk about the RLT. Well, we already know that if we want the light to collimate, it has to go through the focal point of this lens. So here we are at the focal point, and we've got that light here. But what if we could take all the rest of this light that's being wasted here, that's shining out onto my hand and my fingers, and we could recycle that light back onto the chip so that its entrance angle, when it comes back from the chip, is perfect to get through this lens. We do that with the RLT optic. It's just a reflecting collar. We'll move it into position here. And well, I guess the first thing let's do is let's take a reading here. We've got a, just a lux meter. And this is pretty close to Candela because we're about a little more than a meter away, but it's pretty close. Um, but anyway, we see 222 there on the meter. And of course, our, our optic is out of the way there. But now we're going to take some portion of that light and we're going to recycle it, meaning all the light that doesn't make it through the hole there, which doesn't meet the entrance angle, is going to be reflected back onto the chip. And so we'll do that here. It'll take just a second for me to line this with one hand. And what we're going to do now is we'll move this out of the way. And this is a spherical reflector. And what it's doing is it's going to it's going to reflect any light that doesn't make it through that hole back onto the chip itself. And if you if you go out here and we take a look there, a little hard to see with the um, camera, but um, look at the lower left corner and you see a, a reflection of that chip. I'm moving it down now and I'm moving it up. And it's a little yellower because it's been recycled onto that phosphor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that back up. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but I can see it here a little bit better. And I've got a, a three-axis stage here, and I'm adjusting it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get that perfectly centered in that position there. And now I'm going to go ahead and check it again. Now, I haven't changed the lumens. I haven't changed the output. I haven't changed anything. In fact, I just did a very quick... Um, adjustment with my hands just using my eyes rather than a meter and you can see I've nearly doubled or I did double the output um, of light through that lens and I've got double the amount of lux or candela there that I had before and basically what I've got now is about a hundred thousand candela if we measured it all out um, which can has a, a distance of well over 500 meters so you can see, didn't change anything. Not a more powerful chip, no more lumens. I've just reflected all that wasted light back onto the chip itself. I re-energized the phosphors on the LED chip, and it allowed me to take all the light and put it through the lens. So my entrance angle now is all of the light is getting through the lens rather than just a very small portion of it. While I've lost some efficiency due to the recycling here, I still have gained 2x, so I've doubled the gain on my output there. So I've got double the amount of light from the same amount of lumens. Now what's interesting is, is that when I recycled that light, all that light is now passing through that focal point. So every bit of light is going through the focal point, meaning every bit of light getting through that lens is perfect and it's collimated. So a lot of people think, well, why couldn't you use a reflector like this and gather up all that light? You could. The problem is, is that when it reflects, it's not passing through the focal point. It's, it's emanating from the side of the reflector, so its angle is not such that it'll be focused going out. So basically, it would just bounce around inside and be wasted again. So that's how you use 100% of the light, and that's how you create a long-range flashlight 
using RLT technology from Marine Beam.